Greetings, family. It's Empress D, obviously, in a wonderful nature space. You'll never catch me anywhere but a nature space. That's not true. I think I have a couple of videos where I'm not in nature. But nonetheless, I am in nature now, enjoying the beautiful weather. No, it's not sunny, but it's beautiful nonetheless. And so I'm here sharing with you guys. <sighs> family, I wanted to talk about my patient support person experience. So I acted as a support person for an individual who was receiving medical care today and I had a very wonderful experience. Not initially, um, but, but actually with the healthcare provider, it was a great experience. Very interesting on so many levels. But nonetheless, let me share. Let me share my healthcare experience as a support person. So I think I've shared. I don't. I don't know if I've shared with you, family, that I have like a like she's. It's like my best friend. <laughs> she has. She's like my best friend. She's an eighty-four-year-old wonderful woman who I've grown to really really love and we have a, a a really good relationship so she's my friend i i introduced her as my friend because she's my friend but i know people look at us like it's weird because you know i'm so much younger than her but we're still friends so anyway so i spend time with my friend you know several times throughout the month or, or i try to go more than once a week but so i chill out with my friend and we go out sometimes and so Today I had to take her to, I didn't have to, but I took her to uh, an, an appointment, a medical appointment. And again, I was acting as her support person. I'm obviously not a family member, I'm a friend, and I'm a friend acting in support, right? So that's the role that I was playing. Oh, and so anyway, I'm going to tell you guys the story from beginning to end. So I got to her place, and um, so I called just... Just to make sure, I called the clinic just to make sure they're open, first of all, and just to make sure, you know, like, whatever. So I, I'm glad that I did, because I called, and it was about 11.20 when I made the phone call. I could actually look at my phone and check, but it, I don't know that we need to have the exact time. So it was around that time that I called, and just to say to them, hey, you know, like, you guys are open, you're wonderful. Um, just, just letting you know, we are coming, this is her name we are on our way and she said yes well you know as long as you get here before 11 45 that's when we close our walk-in her regular doctor cannot see her because they have appointments or whatever but she can come to see the walk-in and i said awesome so my elderly friend and i we got down to my car we got to the clinic and when i walked into the office and presented to the receptionist with a smile I had my phone in my hand that showed the time and it said 11.44. We made it in the nick of time. And I only did that to be facetious, right? I didn't, it's just like, I'm glad that I did, but I pulled up my phone, it was 11.44. I said, we are here. And then I shared my friend's name and then I said, okay. And then they proceeded to tell me that, um, that uh, they, their colleague is the one that told me that and they didn't tell me that and as far as they know, the last patient has been taken and the walk-in is closed. And I said, okay, well that's cool. Well, then just please like let her regular physician know that we're here just so that she can be seen, right? It, at this point, it really doesn't matter who sees her, but she's here and let, we're, we're checking in. And I said, like, like we're gonna sit down. And then, so she proceeded to say to me, well, no, like, I just told you, like, the walk-in doctor said he's done and, like, he's already booked up. And I said, but, but we called and they said to come before this time and, and we made it. Um, but she said, but yeah, but like the, you know, other people came before you got here and said they took the spot and now there's no spot. 
I said, I get what you're saying, but, but as you can see, the, the person that's coming here is, is, is elderly and it's not that easy for them to come. You know, they don't drive, they have to coordinate with somebody to be able to bring them. And she's here, right? It's not easy for her to mobilize and get out of her home, but she's here. So I, I get, I get everything that you've said, but, but let's, let's, let's um, decide whichever doctor is going to see her and someone see her but thank you and so I'm, I'm speaking like that like just saying you know like thank you <laughs> that she's trying to send us away but I'm, I'm trying to politely say that that's not feasible given the situation and so let's see the physician and so they went to proceed to the whoever I was speaking to at reception went to speak to the physicians as she told me and she told me that both of them said that they are done, like not seeing her <laughs> and that's what it is. And I said, okay, I think that I need to speak to these doctors because I get what you're telling me, but I get you're telling me this. I need to talk to the physician face to face so that they know that you're telling me this, okay? Because we were told to get here at a certain time and we got here at before that time and now we're being told that she's not being seen and that's not like acceptable and so we kind of need i i need i hear that you're telling me this but i need to speak to the doctors to make sure and then so they proceeded to go back and say, yeah, we spoke to them and they said that they're not seeing her. And I said, again, like I, I, I'm, I really would like to, to make sure that they know that they're telling me this because I get that you guys are not regulated healthcare professionals, but they are. They have a license to protect and they have to protect that license against allegations of professional misconduct. And it would be professional misconduct to tell an elderly patient to come to, an, to the clinic and come before this time to be seen and then for her to arrive before that time and to be told she's not being seen. So I, I, you guys might not know that because you don't have a license to defend, but the physicians do. So, so, so I want to make sure that face to face, I am aware and I, they know that they are refusing to see this woman. And so, an hour later, she's called in to see the physician. I didn't get a chance to talk to the, to let them know. I guess that's when they finally spoke to the care provider, perhaps, or I'm just giving the provider the benefit of the doubt who knows but but I was told several times that, that she wasn't gonna be seen and I had to be very persistent and then she was finally seen now that was the first part of the patient support person experience the second part with the actual medical doctor was phenomenal so this practitioner was a wonderful middle upper middle age man um, I consider myself middle age and he's older than me. So I guess, wow. Anyway, yeah, maybe we're in the same cohort. Who knows? Anyway, he may be in his, I don't know, upper uh, Caucasian, um, very friendly and personable, very good bedside manner. And he profusely apologized for his front staff. And he reiterated that him and his colleague know that, you know, that they they have the final say if, if patient if a patient is seen or not. And you know, he, they're really sorry about the friend staff. And he profusely and profusely and profusely apologized on behalf of himself and his colleague, who was also in the building, her actual family practitioner. Anyway, so. Uh, that was one part of the positive experience with him and in, in that he recognized that she was being treated wrong. And imagine if I wasn't uh, privy to the healthcare system, she would have been turned away and her family member would have, this is very bad and unacceptable. And, and they knew it and they profusely apologized, right? And so I guess part of this is a message to anybody that 
you have a right to be seen, right? Especially if you're told to come in and you come in before the time they told you to come in, don't go back home. You stay until you're seen, okay? Because patients have rights. And sometimes these front staff don't know it, you know? And sometimes the actual healthcare providers need to be called up on it, right? And reminded why they're actually here is to actually help patients and be compassionate. Nonetheless, this physician was quite compassionate, quite compassionate, a beautiful bedside manner, and treated her in a manner that I would have treated a patient, right? Did the exact same things I would have done within, within reason, right? You know what I'm saying. He, he gave her really good care, sub, sub, uh, above standard care, at least in my eyes. And my eyes are quite, like, like I, I apparently give good care, you know, as a testimony from my, my students, I guess, who are good evaluator right because they are paired with different clinicians one-on-one -on -one with see what happens is these individual clini clinicians physicians and and nurse practitioners those healthcare providers that are one-on-one -on -one in a room with a patient they don't get evaluated by anybody right and the patient doesn't know better so when you have a student they're actually learning and seeing the different things and i guess it is a real compliment to have students really commend me on my practice so i'm only now in this moment recognizing what an honor it is to have students commend me right and and i'm actually friends with a lot of my my former students and shout out to all of you guys you know who you are um um i'm friends <laughs> with a lot of my people that i've met through being their nurse practitioner um mentor Anyway, wow, that's interesting. So my whole point is, is to say is that he had a really good bedside manner. Sorry, I went on that aside. It gave her excellent care and I have no complaints about the, the actual visit, right? And so um, the other piece to it is that I don't like to act like I don't know what's going on because I think that's unfair. So I often disclose that I am a former nurse practitioner or a former healthcare provider. And so I did disclose that. And we had an, am an amazing conversation because sometimes they ask, sometimes they don't. He asked why, why are you former? And so I, I, sh I shared with him why former? Because he's like, it's a great profession. Why would you leave it? <laughs> I'm like, exactly, I know. And so I shared with him the circumstances by, by which I am no longer in the profession. And he, it, he was wonderful. He was candid. And I saw through our conversation, the progression of his thinking. And I also saw, I saw him, I saw a light bulb go off in his head. And it takes a, you know, you have to be pretty secure to, to go through those progressions. And I'm so happy for him and proud of him. And, um, and through our conversation, him recognizing, well, maybe not recognizing, but admitting to himself that something fishy is really going on here. So I wanted to share family. This is long, 13 minutes. I wanted to share my, my patient support person experience. And I hope that, um, I hope you found some value in it. So again, get out in nature family. You don't want to be missing all of this. Um, minus the garbage back there. It's a deflated um, um, bowl. But um, other than that, quite gorgeous i hope you're getting out and experiencing some of this look at the little um even the flowers right the purple and the the white flowers they're so pretty and and as you walk through these paths that's all you see right and it's so anyway i guess it takes a special person to appreciate this kind of stuff so i guess not everybody and into it so but i am but anyway i'm getting really long-winded thank you for taking the time to listen to this message family i love and i value each and every one of you one love